Big Bend National Park. Imagine a park that takes the mythos of a wild Texas and distills it in mountains. The first peak at this national park is both intimidating and awe-inspiring. Its wilderness can be seen from miles away, and its remoteness means that this national park still maintains that wild west or It's vast, rugged, and a park whose beauty is all over just waiting to be discovered. We have a lot to explore, so buckle up and let's climb into Big Bend. Hey everyone, and welcome to Big Bend National Park in Southwest Texas, right on the border of Texas and Mexico. Big Bend National Park is enormous with huge wide open spaces and three different types of biodiversity from rivers, deserts, and mountains. Some of what allows that is the huge contrast in land elevations, going from 1,700 feet all the way up to 7,800 feet. It is quite the elevation change. And since we are on the topic, Let's start with a window into this topography by heading up to the Chisos Basin Visitor Center to take off on the window trail to get a view of this rugged terrain on the way to a small slot canyon. All right, we are in the Chisos Mountain Range right now in the mountaintop area of Big Bend National Park, heading on the window trailhead right now. Um, you can actually see the, the window right behind me, which gives you a nice little window into the more desert part of Big Bend. It's about a four and a half mile, three hour round trip trail. Um, it's really fun. We're at like almost a 5,000, just under 5,000 feet elevation. I think we're actually going down for this one though. So we'll actually be getting lower with this. So it's going to be more of a hike on the way back, easier going down, but um, really pretty, beautiful, sunshiny day. Let's check it out. Heading down the switchbacks into the window slot canyon gives you plenty of opportunity to see the window and get to experience the desert flora. Along the way, you'll get to see some of the nearly 180 species of butterflies as you get down closer to the valley. But remember, with that sun beating down on you, it can get hot. It's really important to, to hydrate. There's, there's greenery, so you know there's water in, the, uh, water in the environment, but it is very, it is still very arid. That's the first time I ever remember a, a park ranger, specifically when we came into the park, it literally just stopped us with like, drink water. Climbing down those red rocks to the valley, the landscape around you begins to take on a brand new perspective. These massive rock formations give you a sense of scale that make you feel so small. And these massive mountains not only look big, but they start to feel big. Well, we made it to the base of the Windows Trail. We're not quite at the end, but we did get to the point where we are now following a little riverbed and there's shade all of a sudden. So it's nice to be out of the sun, into the shade, heading towards the final uh, little part of this trail and uh, really close to the end. So let's hike there and finish it. The valley leading to the window is carved by a narrow stream. Today, water flowed seemingly out of nowhere, but just as sudden as it appeared on this dry day, it disappeared into the rocks and back into the ground. And after the switchbacks, giant rocks and riverbed, we finally reached the namesake window. All right, we made it to the end of the window trail. And once you get to the end, just really basically could just fall right off. But you get to see a beautiful view of the entire desert and the rest of the Big Bend National Park, some of the further mountains. If you are wondering how close you can get into that window, well, um, although we are safe right now, I wouldn't go any further than we are right now. Um, so now this is an out and back. We will be heading back right now. Hopefully there's no rain because if there is rain, well, we'll let Charlie describe why that's bad. This is like a playground slide. This is so smooth. This is the uh, window pour off, if I'm not mistaken. This, it was listed on his all trails. So if you get any kind of rain down here, it just gets poured right off along with anybody dumb enough to sit down here. Like us. Like us. To demonstrate, here's an advanced simulation of what he's talking about. so realistic. So be careful. But if you are looking for an easier hike, check out the one-third mile easily accessible window view trail, which offers a nice guided trail with an overlook into Big Bend through that window. 
I think it'd be a good time to bring up that there are a lot of wildlife in these trails. You see signs frequently warning you of bears and cougars, and even if you're not worried about those big animals, there's other smaller ones to worry about, like scorpions and tarantulas. In fact, when we were on our way here, we ran into a tarantula on the road. It's not often that you see a tarantula in the middle of the road that is so big it's casting a shadow. For not having much water, wildlife sure is everywhere including some that you'll want to keep a good distance from, like this either very full or very pregnant black-tailed rattlesnake we saw on the window trail. Don't worry, I used a big zoom lens and stayed far back. And even if we didn't see any, reports of black bears from other hikers and signs of their presence were everywhere. But before we get any further, let's spend 90 seconds on the history of this national park. I'm not the first to notice the beauty of this landscape. The park's rugged terrain and unique geological features have attracted humans for thousands of years, from the ancient hunter-gatherers of the desert archaic period, to the nomadic tribes of the Mescalero, Apache, and Comanche, to the American settlers of the 19th century. The park's first known human inhabitants were Native Americans who lived in the area as far as 10,000 years ago. These people of the Paleo-Indian era can still have their presence felt in the petroglyphs which can still be found in the park today. In fact, in 1967, an archaeological survey estimated Big Bend to have over 5,000 archaeological sites in the park. In 2002, that number was up to 26,000. Fast forwarding a bit to the late 1700s, the Spanish began to explore the area, and in the 1800s, American settlers arrived in search of new land. The park was officially established as a national park in 1944 by FDR in the middle of World War II, one week after the invasion of Normandy. It was meant to be preserved for the future generations to witness its beauty. Too much is at stake to forget. For a task ahead of us, which we must now complete. After work by the Civilian Conservation Corps, it opened to a whopping 1,500 visitors that first year. And that was 90 seconds of history. Now let's head back to our next trail. All right, so we're about to set out onto the Lost Mine Trail, uh, named for a legend, legendary, but still remaining secret mine. Apparently, there are no ore bearing rocks or mountains in Big Bend, but there is a legend that there is a hidden mine that had uh, silver and gold ore from the Spanish conquistadors. Uh, this is a 4.8 mile trail. It's an out and back. It's about 1,100 feet elevation gain. <coughs> Worth noting, very small parking lot. This is one of the major attractions of this park, but the parking lot probably holds about 20 cars. So if you come in early, you should be okay. Talking like sunrise. We got very lucky. Uh, it's about lunchtime now. People started to come back to their cars and head out for lunch. We were able to get a pretty choice parking spot. So just be mindful of when you're coming to visit. With our back to the window trail we hiked the previous day, we begin our hike, this time heading up the mountain rather than down into the valley. Along the way, unique desert alpine fauna line your hike, giving your already stunning landscapes an extra dash of color. With nearly 1,600 species of plants in Big Bend, it's enough to keep even the seasoned botanist busy on this lost mine trail. I wish we had a bunch of prop gold and silver so we could do a video at the end like, yep, still hidden. Oh man, this is uh, this gets steep pretty quick. Getting out of breath and uh, not very far. Since you are hiking beside the mountain, you get views immediately, while still having enough trees along the route for a bit of shade as you climb. So we're about a mile up on the Lost Mine Trail, and there are some periodic vistas that you get to see that are unbelievable. Literally every direction here is crazy beautiful. You got mountains to the left, mountains to the right, mountains behind you. It's I, I can't imagine where this trail leads to because this is awesome. Even if it, this ended here, it'd be totally worth it. I am pumped to see where this leads because this is some really pretty trails that we're walking on. And as you continue up the trails towards the switchbacks, you, oh God, another trance on the trail. Yes. <laughs> anyway, it's amazing to see how these high elevation desert trees grow out of the most unlikely places. Their roots literally coming straight out of the cracks and rocks as they stabilize themselves in the wind. Man, first mile is pretty straight. 
the second mile is like all switchbacks. So, uh, oh man, I am uh, struggling here. We had about a half mile left on this trail. A couple switchbacks remaining, but the interesting point is that we have made about 790 feet elevation gain and the total trail is 1100. So we have about 310 feet to uh, climb in the next half mile or so. So it's gonna, it's gonna be pretty breathy. The end of the trail does get more steep and wooded as the switchbacks get tighter. And it's important to watch your step. We gave way to one of the largest rattlesnakes I've ever seen in my life. He took his time crossing the trail. But if that happens, Keep your distance and have some patience. It's their part. Yeah, I'm partly thinking of trying of what to say next. And also just trying to catch my breath because we are, we're pretty high now. We just got to the top of the Lost Mine Trail and we can see an awesome view of the window trail behind us that we hiked yesterday. Now we're gonna about to see a beautiful view of the top of the Lost Mine Trail where we can see an even bigger vista and I can't wait to see it. Even for a trail where you can see a lot, this view is something else. And you still have quite a bit of rock to walk on to check out the views and see the animals that aren't quite afraid of heights. Well, we have made it to the line. A Lost Mine Peak, right? Which is at an elevation of... Narrator? Uh, 7,550 okay. feet. And uh, it's beautiful up here. We get beautiful panoramic shots all around us. Uh, you can see miles and miles all the way across Big Bend, all the way to the Rio Grande River. And what's really cool about when you get up here, some of the rock formations, they're awesome rock formations up here. One of them, I swear, looks like Kong Island from Donkey Kong Country. Just come up here and let your imagination go wild, because there are a ton of things that just look like some weird faces. And uh, once you get up here and just stare at them for a while, you really get a chance to experience them. And let's go down to the valley and the Rio Grande and check out the river. Let's go. So we're here at Sotol Vista. Uh, it is on the scenic Maxwell Drive, uh, which is a 30 mile drive that brings you from the entrance of the park, thereabouts, to uh, Santa Elena and the Rio Grande River. Uh, Sotol Vista is nice because there are images that show you exactly what you're looking at, right? So if you look out into the distance, you can see this small U-shaped valley that's actually going to be uh, Santa Elena. So it's, it's it's interesting to see how small it is and to look at the perspective versus when you get there and they're just hundred of feet uh, high rock walls uh, where the Rio Grande is. So we're really excited to get out there. This is just a nice, uh, very windy vista to take a look at everything. Looking out, you get a sense of scale. And with this much remote land, this scenic drive gives you a great place to get out and look up. And when the sun goes down in Big Bend in this giant Texas sky, a secret hidden in plain sight is revealed, if you are patient and caffeinated. We are in Big Bend National Park at night. This is one of the international dark sky areas, and it is during one of the meteor shower nights. So we are really trying to see some amazing things, and hopefully we can find some stuff for you. Seeing a night sky like the one in Big Bend is quite rare. Nearly every city or town with any sort of population, large or small, give out light pollution from cars, houses, light poles, you name it. Look at this map. Big Bend is actually the darkest area of Texas. And that allows you to see this. Yes, this is long exposure photography, but standing up and looking at the sky in Big Bend, your eyes adjust to see the wonderful Milky Way. And a place designated as an international dark sky is suddenly incredibly vivid. And as soon as the sun starts to pierce the dark sky, the deep Milky Way disappears. And you lower your gaze from above back to the desert and the rocks below. Before getting down to that river, and while that hot midday sun is hitting us hard, let's keep heading down the road to check out a short detour in Tough Canyon.
All right, we're at the top of Tufts Canyon right now. Uh, it's a short little 0.75 mile round trip canyon walk. Hopefully we're gonna check it out and get out of this heat, so let's go. Tuff is literally named for what this canyon is made of. Tuff, T-U-F-F. Tuff is a rock type made up of welded volcanic ash. To weld ash requires sustained temperatures of over 1100 degrees Fahrenheit. So yeah, it's hot today, but I guess it's all perspective. Fast forward a few thousand years and now that's a trail. There are two ways to see Tuff Canyon. The Overlook takes you on a small dirt trail to a viewing platform located right above the canyon, which allows you nice 180 degree views. Perfect if you want just a quick peek before heading back on the road. The other way is to go towards Tuff Canyon floor, and with temperatures approaching 95 degrees and the sun blaring down at us, that shade sounded good. So we walked down towards the very gravelly canyon floor for a nice shaded walk. I'm sure the narrator is doing a great job explaining this canyon, but I think one of the cool things that we ran into that he should really make sure he mentions is the toad that we ran into. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. There is wildlife down here, like that toad, which it neatly camouflaged and I guess got me excited to see. And this rainbow belly, greater earless lizard soaking in the rays. You see this canyon, although not very large, offers a unique ecosystem for these animals with rough canyon walls creating natural shade in the middle of the desert. And as you get further down, even some water. I mean, I wouldn't drink it myself, but the bugs in these little holes provide some good food for that toad and lizard. And a nice spot to cool off if you're into that kind of thing. So it looks like at the end of this trail, we do have to climb a decent amount of rocks to get to where we're going. So see how it goes. As the gravelly rock gives way to larger boulders, the path becomes quite a bit more difficult to navigate. And although you can get just a little bit further, this is usually the time to turn back. Now we head back to the road to head to the Rio Grande River and on one of the crown jewel trails of the park, the Santa Elena Canyon Trail. This is the Rio Grande River Scenic Overlook. Uh, we stopped here before we got down to the Santa Elena uh, River Access Trail, uh, which we're planning on hiking, but we had to stop just to marvel at the size of this wall. Um, quick to remember Game of Thrones and the, the wall in the north just because of the sheer size of it. It's really hard to, it's really hard to articulate just how big it really feels. Well, the narrator can help you with that, Charlie. This massive wall is over 8 miles long and reaches heights of over 1,500 feet. The ice wall in Game of Thrones was less than half this height. That's actually 50 feet higher than the Willis Tower in Chicago. So, yeah, it wouldn't exactly be easy to walk across to Mexico with that in our way. But to get to the back part of the trail, we would have to go over water because the wooded boardwalk trail takes you right up to the water's edge. And that must mean it's time to get wet. All right, we're at the uh, Santa Elena Canyon Trail. I'll have the narrator interrupt me if I mispronounce that. He's close, but it's Santa Elena. And I'm probably still getting that wrong. But the only way to get across to the actual trail is by fjording through the water. So I'm taking the shoes off. I don't know how deep this is, so let's see what we got. Right, that is some thick mud. Holy crap. Oh, that is some muddy mud. Oh my God. All right, let's see what we got here. I don't know about this. Well, I was like two steps in and the mud was like already to my, like halfway up my knee. Ugh, it's so, it feels so awful. <laughs> Oh no. <laughs> so, uh, and then people walked by and said, hey, there's a dry spot up ahead you can walk across real easy, so. I don't know how to get out of here. Easily. Ugh, God damn it. There you go. Whoops. In other words, you can cross here, or, yeah, just pan left, keep panning, here. Although doing that comes with its own set of challenges too. 
So we're on the uh, Santa Elena Canyon Trail, and uh, we have to cross the Rio Grande River on the American side, and the American side to, to get over and see down the canyon itself, um, which requires you to walk down the river bank, which is this very, very fine silt, uh, silty, sandy dirt. And I now think I have like three pounds of mud in my boot to uh, reward me for that for that stunt. And uh, hopefully I don't accrue too much more, but eh, hopefully I don't eat those words. But with the sun setting over the canyon, all that was worth it, and it was the perfect time to explore. The trail, once you get across, is actually pretty easy to navigate. Not a whole lot of elevation change, just a few steps up and a few steps down. But you get a chance to gawk at this massive wall that blocks uh, the view into Mexico. I mean, it is truly an amazingly impressively sized wall. To be sandwiched between these entirely vertical cliffs is quite an experience. The trail continues down further into the canyon to a view like no other in the park. A calm river like the Rio Grande tearing rock giants into two. The glare of the setting sun creating an orange-hued marvel. We are at the end of the trail. And listen to this. Echo! echo. Pretty solid, Pretty solid echo. echo. Even turtles, like this Big Ben slider, enjoy a good canyon sunset, catching a few more rays before a cool desert night. But you can find other animals in this canyon too, like a variety of lizards, like this common fence lizard. Or, yes, millipedes, which you'll find along the water. They are not poisonous or pose a threat to humans, other than creep me out a lot. And of course, plenty of desert birds who will hang around this aquatic food source. Um, really an interesting trail that really does feel completely different than everything else you've seen in Big Bend so far. And with that, we head back while we still have time, as the valley is engulfed in shadow, as the sun sets over Big Bend and the Rio Grande. Just enough rays left to guide us home. As you drive the long roads out of Big Bend, you get a chance to reflect on what you just saw and experienced. Big Bend National Park is a testament to the enduring beauty of the natural world and a reminder of the preciousness of our planet and our role in preserving it. It is a place where the past and the present come together, where the stories of the land and its people are woven into the fabric of the earth. It is a place where the human spirit can be renewed where we can reconnect with the beauty of nature. It is a place that will continue to inspire us long after we have left its boundaries. It is a treasure not just to Texas, but really a treasure to our planet. A land of natural wonder. A place where the beauty of nature is on full display. Big Bend National Park. Thanks for watching. I hope you liked the adventure and it inspires you to take some of your own. If you want more, make sure to hit the like and subscribe button and check out some more from my channel. Thanks.